very basics. Uh, what we have today, we're going to get into con in the initial configuration of our brand new Juniper EX switch. Uh, what we see here is I have a serial cable connected to the console port. Uh, with that, I'm using a terminal emulator. Uh, I use Zock on my Mac. And with that, I have a 9600 baud 8 and one connection, uh, which allows me to get, uh, get terminal access to the box. Uh, I've spared you the time from the whole boot, boot sequence. Uh, this would be where you were if you uh, just powered up the box and you let it uh, complete. You'd be sitting here at the login prompt. Uh, first thing I want to point out is on all brand new Jun Junus boxes, you'll see this message up here that says, please log in as root, no password is required. To start initial setup, type easy setup at the Junos prompt. To start Junos CLI, type CLI at the Junos prompt. What that's telling you is you got a brand new box uh, where there's no password set and you have two options to configure it. You can either use the easy setup uh, or you can use the CLI. We're going to go through the CLI configuration. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could do the easy setup on your own. Uh, so we're going to do the CLI today. So uh, from the root prompt at the bottom, we're just going to type in uh, root. And you'll see we're starting to get logged in here. We're on Junos 11.3 R1.7. Uh, now, after you log in, you'll see up here where the where the cursor is. It says root at colon re colon zero percent sign. It's kind of mixed in the um, the text here, and that can be confusing for the very first time if you're doing this. But what you want to do, uh, just punch enter a couple times, get that clear so we see at the bottom. Um, so where you are right now is you're in the BSD shell. You're not quite in the Juno's operating system yet. You're still in the shell. So none of the shell commands work right now. Um, only Unix commands work. So things like ls, we can look at the file structure. We can see where we are in the uh, the file tree here. Uh, we're in the slash root directory. So we logged in as root, so we're in the root directory. That makes sense. Anytime you log in as root on this box, uh, you're going to get pushed into the shell to start with. Uh, I highly recommend you don't mess around in the shell unless you really know what you're doing. We'll get in some episodes coming up uh, which will need to be in the shell and I'll, and I'll show you how to do some stuff, but uh, I recommend you don't be in there if you don't have to. So what you want to do here, uh, we're going to type CLI and CLI is going to actually promote us into the Juno's operating system. You'll see now we're in the operating system, uh, very similar to any other type of network operating system out there. Uh, very context sensitive, a lot of help, a lot of ways to try and get you get you through the information without having to move to Google. Uh, so what we just did, the question mark shows us the basic configurations. Now, the prompt that we're at, root, uh, and then the caret there, or the greater than symbol, uh, is identifying us that we are in the operational mode. And in operational mode, you can't really do too much to the box as far as configuration. Um, there's a couple commands you can use, but the primary, for the Primarily, the stuff that you do here is show um, and monitoring type information. So let's just start with the show command. Uh, pretty pretty typical. Uh, if you type in show and question mark, you'll get a bunch of other commands you can use. Uh, I'm going to quit out of that so we don't have to go through the full list. But what I want to show you is show interfaces. So context sensitive, if I type IN and then hit uh, enter, it's going to say you've got two possible options here. Uh, if I type in INT and hit space, now we see the full show interfaces. If I just hit enter there, uh, it's going to start to send the output of the show interfaces. Now, this is a pretty detailed output. Um, you know, it's going to go through every interface, a lot of detail about it, a little more than we want to see right now. Uh, really, all I want to do is just do view one interface. So if I do show interfaces, uh, and then I type in, let's type in gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0, and I do enter. That narrows the focus, right? So now we're just looking at a single interface. We have a lot more information than we probably still need, but we're just narrowing the focus on that one interface. There's nothing plugged into the box yet. Like I said, all I have is the console cable connected. Um, so gigabit ethernet 000 uh, enabled, but its physical link is down. There's nothing connected to it. That makes sense. There's no uh, input or output on the um, interface as well. So. Um, now that's pretty cool. We've seen a little bit about the interface, but you know, if we want to just look at all interfaces, uh, just to see kind of what their status is, there's another way to do that, uh, and that's through an additional command here. So if we do show interfaces in a question mark, we're going to get an options here. A um, bunch of the options are the interface name themselves, but then there's some other stuff down here at the bottom I want to show you. Um, one of that is one of those is going to be brief. Uh, the other one is going to be extensive. And then the third one is going to be terse. Those are the three you're going to use primarily in the show interfaces, at least, to show to really kind of uh, narrow in or widen the scope of the information you want to see about that interface. So let's say we want to say we look at Ethernet 0, 0, 0, 0 again, uh, but we don't want quite as much detail. So let's do terse, real brief. 
Now with that, what comes up is just the interface information and some information about it. So we know it's admin up, interface is enabled, a link is down, nothing plugged into it. Uh, from a protocol perspective, it's set up for Ethernet switching, which means it's a Layer 2 interface. There's no Layer 3 information on it. So now we've got that. That's that's cool. That's some good information. Let's change that. We use the up arrow, one of the, your shortcut commands. Uh, and let's change this to extensive. Now you'll notice extensive really delivers the full phone book of information about that interface. A lot more detailed information from an input-output perspective. So you can do a lot more... Um, you know, investigation if you're having issues with that interface or any type of network issues going on. Now, um, what I also want to show you is we have some pipe commands that are pretty cool for really narrowing down and doing some other stuff. So let's say I do show interfaces. And, you know, I want to see all the interfaces, but I only want to match a couple lines. So if I use the pipe symbol and the question mark, I get another whole list here of stuff I can use. Uh, and the one we're going to use right now is match. And match is very similar to grep in Unix, where it can match kind of a regular expression or uh, uh, some other type of variable. And what we're going to match against is GE dash. Now, GE dash should capture all the lines where there's a gigabit Ethernet interface. So let's run that. Okay, cool. We've captured a whole bunch of interface information. Now, what you see here uh, is a physical interface and a logical interface. Uh, the physical interface is obviously the physical interface where the RJ45 will plug into, uh, and that's a gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash some number. Uh, and then there's a logical interface, and that's the second line there, which would be gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash some number dot some number. Now, in this case, we all have dot zeros on here, and those are uh, what we in the Juniper world call units. Uh, you can uh, relate them to sub-interfaces, uh, very similar. Uh, you can do multiple different logical interfaces on a physical interface. And we'll get more into that when we actually start configuring it, but I wanted to point that out right now. So uh, that's cool. Now we've seen, um, we matched all of that uh, massive output for just what we wanted to see there with the gigabit Ethernet interfaces. Now let's do one other thing. In Junos, we have the option for double piping, actually multiple pipes, um, to do to match even deeper information. So let's say we want to match gigabit Ethernet dash, we got that. Let's just say we want to match also just physical. Let's run that again. Cool. Now we're just hitting the physical interfaces. So now we've double piped two matches and we've got that. Let's do a triple pipe. The last thing we want to do now that we know that, we want to do a count. And with the count, we're going to get a detailed information back about exactly how many interfaces we have. So now we know that we have 24 gigabit Ethernet interfaces. That's about the longest way as possible to figure that out. Uh, I could have just looked at the front of this and told you this is a 24 port box, but I did want to illustrate the purposes uh, of the multiple pipes and the matching and some of the other stuff you can do there. So uh, we'll get more into that as we go through setting stuff up. I just wanted to set the stage a little bit with the piping. Okay, the next thing I want to do is show you a little bit about the, the chassis itself. So again, we're back to our show command. Run the show. And what we're going to do next is chassis. And under show chassis information, this is where we can see stuff about the hardware. So if I do show chassis hardware, I'm using tabs and spaces here, we output that. Now, there's not too much interesting about an EX2200 from a hardware perspective. It's pretty much a fixed configuration. But what, what we can see under chassis is we have an EX2200 24T. Uh, that means we have 24 ports of uh, Ethernet, uh, non PoE. Uh, we have the CPU, which is built in. Uh, we have PIC0 and PIC1. Uh, PIC0 is controlling all of our 24 fixed Ethernet ports, and PIC1 is controlling the four SFP optical ports uh, used for uplink. And then we have a power supply and we have a fan tray. So pretty simple for this device, but just wanted to show you that. Uh, lastly, what I want to show you before we wrap this one up, I'm going to try and keep these sessions to about 15 minutes apiece. I want to show you what we're going to talk about next, uh, and that's the configuration. So if I type show, again, configuration, we're going to output all of the configuration that's running on the box right now. So what we see here is it starts to uh, come up. The first thing that comes up is system. Now what I want to point out is this is a hierarchical um, configuration script. So every layer uh, is identified by an upper layer. So to start off with, uh, at the top level configuration, we have top level hierarchies. So we have system. Underneath system, we have a sub-level hierarchy, which is auto installation. And then underneath that, we have another squirrely bracket, and then we start to have the, con the commands of the auto installation. Now that that uh, format will follow all the way throughout the configuration. So if we go past system, 
we get down to interfaces. You'll notice it says interfaces, then curly bracket, and then the interface name. And then the interface name, curly bracket, the unit number. And then the unit number, curly bracket, the family, which is Ethernet switching. So what this gives you is the power to quickly get to whatever you need to when you want to look at configurations or when you want to modify the configuration. So I'll let this pass through, we'll go through the rest of it. We can see it's pretty long. And what we were looking for, we either have to start scrolling through or hope that we hit the right space bar and stop where we want to look at it. But let's say we want to look particularly just at protocols. If we do show configuration protocols, look at that. It just brought up just the protocols subsection of the configuration. Now this is important because you need to be in the layer you're working on for the commands to work. And the, you'll see this more in the next section, but you have, if we want to make changes to the protocol, we need to be in the protocol subsection to do it. Um, so there's a whole layer of um, moving throughout the configuration to be in the right subsection for what you're edit editing. Okay, so uh, also the last thing I want to show you is some of the power of Junos. Now Junos is a universal operating system for Juniper. It runs on all of its routers, all of its switches, and all of its security products today. Uh, that's SRX, EX, J-series, T-series, MX-series, um, and TX series. So the nice thing about that is once you learn it on one box, you can transfer that information to all the other hardware. Now I'm doing this today on EX2200, which is the low end of the switching line, but that's really only a hardware performance perspective. It has nothing to do with the configuration that I'm going to enter in here. We could take this configuration and apply it to almost any other uh, Juniper box that's running Juno software. Now, underneath, underneath that, the one other cool thing is that it's all XML based, right? So if I do a show configuration, you know, again, let's just say uh, interfaces, we're going to get back all of this uh, easily human readable interface information. But what I can also do, we'll get back to our pipe command, if I say pipe and I say display, question mark, I can display that output in a bunch of different ways. One of the ways I want to show you is XML. If I do show, inter show configuration interfaces display XML, enter, what we get here is the exact same information we had before, but it's with XML tags. Now this is cool because if you want to do any type of uh, automation or orchestration, you can use the built-in um, you know, Juniper scripts to be able to interface to, to this with XML. Uh, if you know how to program in XML, if you know how to, how to write uh, XML scripts, you can use this to directly interface with the configuration to do any type of autom automation, uh, monitoring, um, deployment, you, can, you name it, you can pretty much do it inside Junos. And if you write that script one time, you can deploy that on many different other types of equipment because again, they're all running XML on the back end. So the last thing I want to show you uh, is another display. So we're going to get familiar with the set command next week. Uh, but what I want to show you right now is how to show the, the current configuration with display set. So show configuration interfaces pipe display set. What this shows us is the set commands used to actually configure that. So this is handy for when you uh, want to go through and you want to see what you did. Uh, you can output this in a, in a display set to show you the exact commands you would have typed to get that configuration the way it is. So next week we'll talk about set. We'll actually get in the configuration. We'll set the root password. We'll set the host name. We'll start getting the interfaces configured. Uh, and we'll start to build out a topology of how this network's going to gonna go. Uh, these are the basics of Junos uh, from a operational perspective. Uh, the couple things we, we covered the shell, operational mode, and next week we'll get into the config configuration mode. Thank you.